bypassing Nintendo's security stuff. And Yuzu settled. $2.4 million they're going to pay Nintendo, and they're closing shop. Whoa. Yeah. R.I.P. Seriously. Yeah. Emulators are great. They're fun. And emulators are legal. But uh, Nintendo shut them down. Ugh. Are we ready? The man wins again. So yesterday, on this very same program, <laughs> you brought up uh, cryptocurrency. I did. And you talked about how, you know, uh, Bitcoin's doing well. And did it hit the all-time high Good yesterday? Good synopsis, it did. It did. It did. But then it went back down. Yes, it did. Because last time I checked, it was like 65000 And I had brought up that I had bought coins right at the beginning of the pandemic, but I couldn't remember uh, which ones they were. But I had the passwords, you know, the 12... Seed phrase. Let me fix my mic here. Sure. Hold on. It's rubbing against my face. Uh, you know, this seed phrase, yeah, the 12 things, like hot dog and sandwich and all those. Yeah, if, if people don't know about this, so instead of just having one password, say you install your wallet, mm -hmm. which is what holds your crypto, on one computer, you get a new computer. How do you switch it over? You can't do it with just one password. That's not secure enough. So they give you, when you set up the account, this, it's usually 12 words. But you can uh, go 15, you can go 24. Sure, you can, yeah. And they're like, it's a random set of words. Right. Yeah. So I had those, but I didn't know what wallets or coins they were connected to. Sure. So I'm driving home after the show yesterday, and I'm just racking my brain. <laughs> and the only thing I can come up with is two things. The guy who founded YouTube and Waffle. That's all I had. You said pancake yesterday. Right. And I uh, did some thinking, and it was Waffle. Crispier, crispier. So I got home, got, I got on my computer, and I figured out that ThetaCoin was the one that was connected to the YouTube founder. Okay. And that waffle swap was the reason why I was thinking waffle. That's an exchange on the internet. There's also pancake swap, which I have used. Okay, maybe it is pancakes then. Because I went to waffle swap and I logged into my what, MetaMask wallet. Yeah. And then I also went to Theta and I uh, logged into my Theta wallet and uh, both are empty. <laughs> totally empty? 100%. So Nothing in there. Maybe somebody cleared you out? That's what I'm thinking. I I'm mean, this happened. Thinking that. When's the last time you logged into these years? Just at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. When I bought yeah. the coins. Because it was the, the thought was I'm just going to buy them and let them sit there. And if they become anything. And I bought them at like half a cent. Mm -hmm. And at one point they were worth $15 a coin. Wow. Now they're at like two fifty. I mean, you still would have had good profits. Yeah. But now somebody profit. else has it. <laughs> So they're empty. So I don't know what to do. I don't know if some point during this entire time I transferred everything over, I sent something to another wallet, or because I look at the transactions and there's no transaction history. None. Not even the transaction of me putting them in the wallet from the purchase. Well, we won't find it in the wallet. We can find it on the internet, though, and I can help you sleuth. This should be, this is a new segment where Cyber detectives. Right, but instead of trying to track down billions, we're trying to track down like 84 bucks. 84 bucks is 84 bucks. Actually, I, I know I bought like $250 worth of Theta coin. See? At nine cents. Yeah, so you even rich that, on Theta right now. Seriously, it's real money we're talking about. That's how many pairs of Hey Dudes? That's enough. Enough pairs of Hey Dudes <laughs> for the rest of my life. A lifetime supply. This is Kim Commando today. I'm Andrew Babinski. Broke Andrew Babinski because I can't find my cryptocurrency anywhere. <laughs> I was just driving home. It's I'm in like, the couch. Waffle, waffle something. <laughs> uh, syrup. It's is there a syrup spot. coin? And uh, this obviously we're part with the A team because Kim Commando's not here. She's in Japan taking a well deserved vacation. Kim Japando. Kim Japando. Did you just come up with that? No, I didn't. I oh. can't take credit. One yeah. of one of our editors said it yesterday, and I have said it in my head about 50,000 times. It's perfect. I love it. Kim Japando. Allie is here, and uh, we're filling in for Kim. She's going to be out all week. This is our tech podcast. We do this every single day. We live stream on you, well, maybe YouTube. Uh, definitely not Facebook. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and Rumble and everywhere else. Please, if you could, help us out. Like, comment, and share the videos. If you enjoy watching the show, you do. We hear your comments. Yeah. We read them. You like it. So tell everybody else in your community, <laughs> I like this. Remember Mikey? Mikey liked Life Serial, and they were all shocked that he liked Mikey it. Mikey likes it. Mikey's going to like this as well. So share it with him. He's not going to know how great it is unless you share. And we appreciate that. So we have five things. Going on in the tech world to start the podcast, Allie? 
Yes, yes, we do. Uh, you know what? I had this at the end, but I think we got to start with it because you did that good That's little. That's true. That good little tease. Uh, the internet's in a tizzy because YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads have all been down. Uh, nobody cares about Threads. I no. just had to add it in there. Uh, so. Oh all no, the there's like six guys that are going to be really upset. The Threads no, is down. No, my thoughts. Who will read them? <laughs> uh, yeah, so they've been down since around 10 a.m. Eastern time. I Mine was right, up right before the show. Yeah, I checked. I was on YouTube earlier. Uh, I was having some Instagram problems this morning, which is not actually a big deal. It was just like me trying to look at a recipe. I got logged out of Facebook. Oh, did so, you? And then my I, I do a radio show here in the Valley. It's on KZ. It's called Beth and Friends. Uh, you can hear it on the iHeartRadio app. Cheap plug. And uh, I, she, my coworker, Beth, she got and went on Facebook, and she's like, oh, I got logged out of Facebook. This is weird. And she started to try and log in. She couldn't. She's like, oh, I forgot my password. Then she's trying to change her password. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. So I open up my app, logged, logged out. out. We tell our phone screener, open your Facebook app. And he opens it, logged out. So we knew it was something bigger. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was able to get right back on, or on right before the show, um, Thank goodness there that you're is back on Facebook. Conspiracy theory is already uh, oh, good, good, going good, wild good. on the internet. Is it Bill Gates related? It's not. Who? Taylor Swift. Because yesterday <laughs> on Instagram, Taylor Swift told everybody to go and vote in the Tennessee primary. And so the Trump supporters uh, hacked and took down all social media so that no one could hear Taylor Swift's propaganda and go to the polls and vote for whoever she wants them to vote for. Cool. So the election has already begun. Uh -huh. Cyber war <laughs> in the election. Uh, it was probably like a server down or something. No, nope. sorry. No, it, it was, was trying to block Taylor Swift okay. and her propaganda to her masses of fans that will blindly do whatever she wants them to. <laughs> go vote. Yeah, no, don't go vote or do... Do, but not for Taylor like Swift's to. people. Don't vote for Taylor Swift because she's not running. <laughs> I'd write her in. I would too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Warning from American Express. This is a bad one. One of their third-party processors, uh, travel-related, who knows what that means, exposed credit card numbers, names, expirations, oh, the, thought, the whole thing. I thought it was going to be uh, personal information. It's just credit card no, numbers? No, it's just your money. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so if you... If they find someone making fake charges on your account, you will not be responsible. How nice is that? I would that? never be responsible. Well, you know, they just needed to say it. Uh, this is, Rich, American Express advises reviewing your account statement over the next 12 to 24 months. Every day. Two years. Every hour. Just refresh, refresh, Oh, what they refresh. buy now. Uh, and they also suggest that you enable, uh, there's instant notifications in the American Express app. Which is very smart. I have you that on one that of on. my bank accounts yeah. and it's very helpful. I have that too. I think you should do it whether or not you were part of this hack, but uh, sucks if you have an American yeah. Express card. I mean, my bank account has been under attack. Just yesterday, someone tried to change my password and I got a text message asking if that was me and if I wanted to confirm it. How does this happen to you so much? I don't know. Whatever, whatever You're shopping leak on some weird that websites. happened. No, just yes. But <laughs> <laughs> but whatever is out there is out there and multiple yeah. people are trying to just coming after me. My card has been taken over two times and canceled by the bank. Mm -hmm. I've had hundreds of dollars in fraudulent charges. So yeah, absolutely. Turn on those notifications. And do check your statements. That is quite stressful. And does it remain stressful? Or at this point, are you kind of like, ugh, come on? I'm just at the point that I'm going to have to, I'm going to leave banks. I just, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else to do. Do you want to get everything converted to gold? It's multiple cards. It's multiple logins. And they yeah. just keep getting in. So well, I don't know what phone? they have. You got the Apple Pay. Yeah, that's true. There you go. But I'm going to switch. But that's where I think the problem is. I think the problem is through Apple Pay. Oh, no kidding. Because when I switched it the first time, and I, we went over this before. I don't think you were here that day. Uh, when I switched it, the cards the first time, they gave me a digital card. Right. I immediately put it on Apple Pay so that I, you know, wasn't broke. And then, boom, it gets stolen again one day later. I wonder if it's related to your I your wa -wa -wa wonder as well. Wow. But I'm just, I gotta, I'm just at the point I'm going to switch back. I'm just going to take all my money, you know what? put it in my freezer, and <laughs> just be done with it. It's going to be so cold when you put it in your pocket. <laughs> cold, uh, hard cash, baby. Ugh. All right, we're moving on. That was on. a Kim Commando joke. She'd be so proud. She and would. And I'll pretend to be you and be sickened. <laughs> Did you hear about this uh, U.S. Air Force employee? I haven't. He's I mean, I've heard of the Air Force. 
Sure, sure. Uh, David Franklin Slater, 63-year-old guy from Nebraska, he met a babe on the internet, mm -hmm. a dating app. Well, uh, I know this is going to have a happy ending. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> unnamed foreign dating site. Who knows what that means, right? So this guy is a retired uh, lieutenant colonel. He holds top, secu top security clearance, and he works at the U.S. Strategic Command uh, at Offutt Air Force Base. So this is no dummy. You'd think. He met this woman, and she must have completely wooed him. Sure. With lines including, Beloved Dave, do NATO and Biden have a secret plan to help us? <laughs> I hear that pickup line so many times at bars. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Dave, the supply of weapons is completely classified, which is great. Dave, I hope to know tomorrow if NATO will prepare a very unpleasant surprise for Putin. Will you tell me? Did he? He did. Dave he told everything? her. Dave told her everything. So she had obviously a lot of very specific questions about the Ukraine war. Um, he told her everything, and then he got arrested. I. Did she give him anything in return? Like, did they ever go on a date? Oh, absolutely not. These did, people never met. Did, did, did she send, you know, pictures? Probably, but I doubt they were of herself. Our entire national security is based on nude photos that could be sent on some foreign yes. dating website? Foreign dating website. Why doesn't he use a, the domestic dating <laughs> website? <laughs> he should hear our talk about uh, those really specific, like, farmers only. Yeah. Uh, there's maybe there's, like, a... Naval co commanders. Colonels only. Hot stuff or something. <laughs> Uh, number three, scammers are targeting parents. This is actually a pretty clever one. Fake SAT and ACT prep courses. So when your kids are trying to get into college, you're already stressed. Like, what am I going to do to get right. this oh, look, wonderful an child into college? Yes, they either call you or they send you something with free materials if you put in a uh, refundable deposit. No, they are taking $249.95 and you don't get anything. So the college board is never going to call you on the phone and ask if you need help getting your kid into college. I'm just, just not, not going to happen. I'm deleting all email. Yep. I'm taking all my money and putting it in my freezer. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to go on any foreign dating websites. I just have to protect myself. Are you still comfortable doing this podcast? Can we turn the cameras off? <laughs> he just doesn't want them to. <laughs> I have to start just... going by a fake name. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Logan Steele. Oh, that's nice. I like it too. Cold hard cash. New gear from Apple. This is number five on our list. Uh, coming next Monday, brand new set of laptops, the MacBook Airs. These have the M3 chip. Sounds affordable. Whoa. You know what? We'll get to that. It's actually not that crazy. Why does the M3 chip matter? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Perfect. you. I No, now I'm, I'm all exposed now. No, that was good. That was good for the gag. I love that. Um, oh, if you're listening on the audio-only podcast, they turned off my camera but kept Alice on so I could be in the dark. It was actually pretty good. 13 and 15 inches. This M3 chip can support two external monitors, which is pretty cool. I'm a two monitor kind of gal. They couldn't before? No, the M2 can only support one external monitor. What? Yeah. You it, Apple people. It is what it is. It's got a fancy webcam, 18 hours of battery life, which okay. is pretty sweet. Not that bad. 1099 for the smaller one and like 1300 for the bigger one. How small is the smaller one? It's a 13 inch. Okay, that's not bad. No. All right, fine. Right? Like, that's pretty reasonable. They were, uh, we have a Is family an member. an iPhone more than that? Yes. A uh, family member wanted to get an Apple for video editing, okay. and, the, and they were going over prices, and it was like $2,200, $2,300 for a, a, you know, MacBook Pro or an Apple Pro. And yeah. I'm like, that is so, technology is so cheap now. Except for that one. Well, the crazy thing, though, is these MacBook Airs are actually pretty darn good. So unless you're doing, like, really, like, if you're doing something with a ton of data, you know, programs that take a ton of memory, like, yeah, I guess video editing, stuff right. like that. But you can do a lot on these Airs. No, they were bickering back and forth because I can just get an Air. No, you've got to get a Pro. No, I can get an Air. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Just get a PC and be done with it. Done, done, done. All right, on the other side, I have a story. It's going to shock you. The internet is fighting with each other. Is this different from when they're mad? Yeah, they're fighting. Okay. All over plastic surgery. That's next on Commando Today. Thank you. This is Kim Commando Today. There is no Kim Commando. She's right now in Japan. I don't know, probably becoming a ninja warrior or some sort of I'm martial arts. I'm not sure arts. you should say that. Why not? I don't know. It feels weird. Where, ninjas don't come from Kentucky. <laughs>
<laughs> Fair enough. Uh, this will be the last podcast I do because I'm going to be canceled for that comment, according to Allie. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew Babinski. This is Allie. We're filling in. We're the A team. We're going to be here all week. Well, Kim, enjoy some time in Japan yeah. and enjoys herself. Thank you for watching. Uh, we do this live streaming on the internet Monday through Friday from 10 to 30 on the West Coast, 1 30 on the East Coast. If you could help us out, like, share, comment. That's the most important one. Be part of the Commando community. We don't do that anymore, right? Uh, we, yeah. we still have it? Yeah, right. we have that. Be part of the Commando community. <laughs> uh, Maddie's upstairs. She produces this show, and she's reading all the comments. And in the last segment of the show, she'll bring them down, and Allie will read some of the best or the ones that make sense. And it really helps us out, though, seriously. Yeah, it does. Comments and shares and likes will really help us out, and we thank you for that. Hold on. I'm going to interrupt you because I feel like every podcaster, streamer, whatever, says things like this. And you just kind of take it on face value, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, it helps them. Why does it help them? Why does it help them? Do you know? Should no. I explain? No, I don't know. Well, really, you're trying to train the algorithm that, like, I like this thing enough to interact with it. I like this enough to take 10 seconds out of my day to sign in and to leave a comment. So those are all the signs that tell, uh, what was that? The internet. That we... Uh, <laughs> That we are an important part of your day. So if you do any of those things, yeah, it goes long. And time. we are. We're very important. So important. Look at us. We're here on the internet. Yeah, and if you don't like, comment, and share, then this, our importance dwindles and we go away. Poof. Go into the ether. Poof. And disappear. Just uh, like your crypto. There's a uh, plastic surgery consultant okay. who is on Instagram. Oh, that's where they all are. And she uh, put up a picture, a side-by-side -side image, but we're going we're gonna to show you them in a second, of... One of her client's patients that she's consulting, new doctors on the East Coast. She didn't say the name of the doctor, which I found quite interesting after you hear all the details of the story. And this is the most amazing transformation she's ever seen. <laughs> Did not name the gentleman okay. in the photos. Did a bunch of hashtags, talked about all the things he had, a facelift and rhinoplasty and an ear tuck and a lip lip and a flu flu. <laughs> oh, a lip lip. Mm -hmm. Those are expensive. Yeah, yeah. And she did it side by side. And the initial reaction to the post was, oh, my God, amazing. And she's interacting with every single comment that's happening. Now, normally, you look at some of her posts, they get like four likes. They get like seven likes. She had something like two, three thousand. Okay. 51,000 likes. Wow, she blew up. So we're going to start with the before this gentleman, I would say, what do you think? He's in his 60s, early 60s, late 50s? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'd go 50s, 60s. I mean, he looks like an older guy. Yeah, he looks pretty good, though. And then he had his transformation. Okay. And this is the after, <laughs> which he looks like he's 17. That is his son. <laughs> he absolutely would be carded if he tried to buy Boone's Farm <laughs> at a convenience store. Truly, if you are just listening and not seeing this, this looks like a father-son picture it like, does not even look close to the same person no no so i now, mean the features are it, you know same features but yeah, he's like yeah, de-aged yeah. truly she says that the surgeries have cut off 30 years at least wow in his appearance okay now the, the comment section is on fire <laughs> and people are like no way this is real this is fake and she's responding to everything yes it is check it out this is amazing and you do that, again, we talked about the algorithm before. She's doing that oh, to build up the excitement. In Look at it. how important this conversation is. Correct. Yeah. Now people are calling her out. So one of the users took the side-by-side -side images and ran them through software. And what this software does, it detects if Photoshopping had been performed. Amazing. It shows you the Photoshopping by a green highlight over the area that had been Photoshopped. How green were these pics. This, he looks like the Hulk. <laughs> His entire face is, pho they even photoshopped the old picture. Yeah, so it looks like they photoshopped, I'm, I'm saying this for our friends who are just listening, it looks like they likely photoshopped more wrinkles, bags, whatever. Made him look older. Yes, and then in the new one, yeah, he's entirely green. <laughs> Entire, even, Except for his bottom lip. Good for him. They, they even photoshopped his T-shirt. You don't have to do that. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> There's no plastic <laughs> surgery that was happening on his T-shirt. This is so fake. This Everything on the internet is so fake. You can't trust anything on the internet except us and this show. But that's, I mean, I'm, I know I'm just throwing it out there as this bold statement, but we are now entering the age of AI and nothing is real. She would risk, in my opinion, 
risk her business's reputation to get attention on the internet by putting up this photo. And I believe the software before I'm going to believe some lady who's trying to get likes on Instagram. Exactly. Likes, which leads to money. Yeah, she has an incentive to try to get this post to take off, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? You have to have something. Like, there's just so much stuff on the internet to scroll through to look at. And so those are the things that take off when it's like, oh, my gosh. And then this he, man looks 30 years younger. I looked at her previous posts, which, which some of them, you know, got 3,000 likes. That's a lot of likes. Sure. She has 189,000 followers, so I guess that's a small percentage. But who knows? She uh, may she have purchased bought, those. Bought those. Yeah. yeah. Those could have been all bots. Not calling you out. I haven't given you your don't name. Know. Yeah. But uh, Susan, you're, oh, no. <laughs> she put up one photo, multiple posts, four likes, five likes. And so if I'm being internet detective, I just go, how are we going to get some attention to exactly. this Instagram page yeah. and this did it but it's so fake <sighs> try harder fakers okay the lesson if you run a business and post to social media going viral great cool would be great unless you go viral because you're one of those people that like uh, I don't know I, I don't think so I think it's the whole no publicity is bad publicity I think it's the fact I'm just going to get attention because I'm going to gain 35,000 yeah. followers out of the 51,000 likes, and then I'm going to be able to sell myself as an influencer when I post an ad later based on my 185. I, I just... It's so gross. The entire <laughs> internet is fake. It is, and I think this is a good lesson that if you are trying to do some bamboozling like this, there is software. There are people... Like, people live for this kind of stuff to, like... Catch people. We're going to hunt you down. Yes. We're the internet find does out. not like liars. The internet does not like people who pretend. Well, also the person who did this, who ran this analysis, they wanted the pub, the attention as well. Oh, they wanted course. all the likes yes. on their comment. Exactly. So it's just greed feeding greed. Oh, it's a, a vicious cycle. I'm not going to believe anything on the internet from now on. Starting now. Welcome back to Kim Commando. Today, I am Andrew Babinski. Normally, I am sitting across the uh, set here with Kim Commando, but she's in Japan. So jealous. I would like to be in Japan. I would love to be in Japan right now. I would like to be anywhere, actually. I haven't had a vacation <laughs> in like two years. I feel that, too. Arizona is perfect right now. This is yeah, like peak Arizona, true. so it would be sad to leave, but... Yeah. But everything's going to change in Arizona in about six and a half hours, and then we'll be in the summer, and we're com going to complain about it <laughs> until mid-November. <laughs> uh, Allie is with me, the A-team, Kim Commando's A-team, and uh, what do you have for us? Meditation apps. They are really big business. Are they? Oh, my gosh. Okay, uh, Calm. You've heard of Calm, right? Yeah. Okay, they have... This This estimate's from 2022, the latest, about 5 million paid subscribers. That's a lot of people. Uh, Headspace, around 3.3 million people subscribe to Is Calm to that. the most popular, the most it is. used? Okay. Yeah. Although Headspace has been downloaded over 70 million times. So they must order offer more in the free section yes. where you get enough that you don't have to sign up. And probably all the people that thought, I'll meditate. And they download it and they yeah. use it once and then they never use it again. Sure. Yeah. Do you meditate? Have you meditated? I tried. I've tried in the past. <laughs> okay. But I can't. Because I I, every time I try... I'm just consumed by the fact that I don't know if I'm meditating yet. And so I'm constantly thinking, like, is this meditation? Am I now? Is it now? <laughs> is now am I meditating or is this just thinking? I think you need a mindset shift because really the act of trying to meditate is meditating. That does not help at all. <laughs> the act of, what, say that one more time. <laughs> the act, trying to meditate is meditating. Uh -uh. It's a practice. But all I, do, all I was doing was thinking about meditation. I wasn't becoming one with your, myself. Oh, no, that won't happen for like 30 years. You have to like bring yourself back to something like your breath or a word. That's why people chant a, a word? specific word or they count because it gives you something to focus on. Bird. Bird is the word. <laughs> Everyone knows that the bird is the word. Okay, this is going to be um, a strange transition, transition, but I'm going to name some song titles and I need you to guess. This is not connected the at all? Well, it's connected. We'll okay. get there. Uh, I, I like games, so I'm, I'm totally kay. down for this. Damn, I Love Miami. Okay. Snap Your Fingers. Snap Your Fingers. I know that Bend one. Bend Over. Yes, of course. Turn Down for What? This is Lil John. It's Lil John. Of course it's Lil John. You know. What? 
There you go. You know him as the guy who screams what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at the Super Bowl halftime show. He was, yeah. Probably the best part of the Super Bowl halftime show. I loved it. When Little John came out, I mean, every, with a group of uh, party I was at, it was like, ah, Little yeah, John! Yeah. I saw a post online that said something like, I apologize for how all of our wives reacted when Lil John and Ludacris came out. <laughs> it was great. It yeah. was a great moment. It was great. Well, he's not just writing rap songs anymore. He actually just released a meditation album. Lil Seriously. John? The guy known for screaming? Yes, yes. Uh, turns out, so he's in his 50s now, and he's got, like, this whole wellness kick that he's been doing for, okay. for years. Um, he started meditating a little bit before he went on stage because it helped him kind of calmed down and then decided, you know what? I need to go deeper into this. I want this to be more than just sit here and breathe a little bit. Um, let's hear a little clip from one of his meditations. Ooh. So before I start my sets, I find a quiet place where I can sit for a few moments by myself. I try to boost my focus with meditation. I try to boost my awareness. I try to increase my sensory perception. When does the beat drop? So that There's I never a beat drop. That's the thing. It really is just this stuff. So he has one um, uh, boost focus. That's what that was. Imagine nature, relieve anxiety, feel gratitude, deep relaxation. Deep so are you sleep. just sitting there listening to him talk to you? That's what meditation is, Andrew. Yeah, you're listening to him. He's guiding you through something. So it might be a body scan meditation. That's where it might be, okay, feel the bottoms of your feet on the floor or in your shoes. It's just to like get you back in your body. Okay, then I'm just doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to sit there and be quiet and then I'm blaring little John music in the background and it's just not working for me. <laughs> I actually really love this. He did an uh, interview with NPR and they asked him like, there are a lot of meditation apps and right. albums and stuff. Why, why did you do this? And he said, um, I learned to listen to the universe. It just, an epiphany came over me. It's like you're supposed to help masses of people, and this is how you're going to be able to do it. <laughs> At $3.99 <laughs> a person. You can listen to this album on the internet anywhere for free. So it's streaming on, like, Spotify and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, YouTube, but he's Spotify. making money off of that. You know what? Yes. That's correct. <laughs> and I hope... <laughs> I'm going to try one and let you know how it goes. All right, yeah. I'm going to try one too as I'm driving home. Good, good. I'll do newsletter here. Come on in, Maddie. Oh. Okay, we can do eight minutes here and we're good. I'm going to read super, super slow. Well, I'm going to go on to a bunko diatribe, so. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Did a little drunk comment? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. What? Okay. okay. Ready? Yep. All right. Kim Commando today. We're back. That's it. That's my entire bring back. That's an entire return to the show. It's very easy. Oh, no. That's not right. This is the time we're supposed to talk about the newsletter. This is day two yeah. of you hosting the podcast. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what happened? I'm already bailing. I'm already getting lazy. All right. Uh, why should people get the newsletter? Because it's great. It's free. Sure. It's only one newsletter a day. Yeah. It takes about five minutes to read unless you're a slow reader, then it might be eight minutes <laughs> or nine. So just- Go at your own pace. However long it takes you, that's fine. Keep your calendar open for that 10 minute <laughs> chunk, no matter how long it takes you. We have so many people, I kid you not, who have left, left us comments since we launched this new newsletter that are like, I wake up, I get my cup of coffee, I sit down with the commander newsletter, the current. I mean, we all have that, that routine. I know, and how nice that we can be that for people. Right, and it's so easy to integrate this into your current routine, whatever you do. Yeah. What, do you, what is the first thing you do when you wake up? I, what do I do? I go brush my teeth. That's the first thing? I think so. All right, because I go downstairs. I, don't, I try not to look at my like phone. Like the first thing that you're inter interacting with. My dog. Okay, Because so my husband's go. usually asleep. When I get up to work out in the morning, the dog gets up. With me. But you could read the newsletter right there when you're hanging with your dog. Oh, no, I've just written the newsletter. I don't need to. I'm saying hypothetically. Oh, sure. If you weren't the author of the newsletter, <laughs> please.
please help me help you. <laughs> Go to getkim.com, sign up for the newsletter. It really is great. We pass along a lot of good information. If you're not on the list tomorrow, it's kind of a bad news alley top story because there are so many scams right now that are fooling people. So we're going to do a little scam warning so that you're not that person That's who sad. says, I never thought it would be me and then it was me. It's free. Go it's get free. the newsletter. Getkim.com. So this is uh, National Women's History Month. Awesome. And because of that, this actually interesting story passed my timeline, and it's tech-related, and it's kind of basically, it's like a little bit of information that you can use. Like the next time you're out with friends or the next time you're invited to a bunko party, you can sit down. Hold on now. Yes? A bunko party? <laughs> yeah. It's a bunko party. Um, have you ever been to a bunko party? No, I have not. Can you explain bunko? It's, it's too hard to explain. <laughs> not how to play, but just... Yeah, it's just a game. It's a game where a big group of people get together. I actually had a tragedy happen at a bunko party. A personal... Why are you smiling? <laughs> because I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust anything I hear on the internet. And this is the internet. It was a personal tragedy. Uh, I was invited to a bunko party where it was... Everyone was strangers. Is bunko like a card game? It's a dice it's a, Oh, it's a dice game. Oh, oh. There's both involved. Okay. And... By, invited to the party, and the way the the bunko game worked, and I've never played before, but I think it's like a Midwest thing that's kind of spreading to the coasts. Okay. And <laughs> the coastal elite. Yes. Have picked up bunko. They're all doing bunko now on their yachts. <laughs> <Do we? laughs> and there was a ton of people there. There was like forty people in this backyard, and all these tables were set up. And basically, if you lost, you had to leave your table and go to a new table and do a new round against new people until eventually okay. you made it all the way to the back of the yard where if you lost, you were kicked out. You were done. Like you had to leave the, the yeah. establishment. No, you just went and ate chips and salsa where everybody else that seems continued better. to play bunko. I would love to lose at bunko. So okay. my partner and I, again, everyone's strangers. Uh, my partner and I, we're awful, and we just keep losing and losing and losing and losing. So at this point, we're at the back of the yard, and the sun's going down. So these people, we join these people, and they're uh, trying to see the cards. They're older, and they're trying to see, and they can't figure out what's on the table. And I was like, I'll help. I'm going to take my phone out and put my light on, and I'll lean it against my beverage can, mm. and it'll light up the table. Oh, what could go wrong? Well, my can was not as full as I thought it would, and it tipped over and spilled all over my Bunko competitor next to me. Humiliating. So, so I felt so bad. I was like, I'll get you a towel. And I immediately stand up and I go to run from the backyard all the way into the house. And I went straight into the sliding glass door <laughs> at full speed. <laughs> that hurts so bad. I haven't done that since I was a little kid. And for a second, you know, everybody's worried that you're injured. Dead. <laughs> and then when they realize you're not, then they point and laugh and snicker. Was there an Andrew forehead mark? On there, oh, absolutely. Full face. <laughs> full face. <laughs> Right there on the sliding glass. And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. But in reality, you my not fine. hand was so destroyed. What is it about getting hurt as an adult that you feel like you have to be like, I'm good? Yeah, no. And you're not good. I you did, wanted to cry. I did not want to show weakness in front of these strangers. Uh -huh. I already was losing, getting my butt kicked at Bunko. I did not want to also be the dummy who ran into the wall <laughs> and needed to call 911, who's also awful at Bunko. I thought you were being dramatic with personal tragedy, but that's pretty tragic. This is how bad I hurt my hand. When I brought her the towel <laughs> to dry off, and she's like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm like, I'm fine. She handed it to me, to my injured hand, and I had to, I couldn't even grip the towel to take it back. My hand was so messed up that I had to squeeze it between two fingers and then quickly transfer it to my non-hurt hand. Well, you couldn't let her know that you were hurt. Right, How embarrassing. Not. How embarrassing to get So the hurt. next time you're hobbled at a bunko party, okay. you'll have this fast fact to All share of with this everyone. To leave. Yeah. Okay, there's still this fact. You ever heard the expression surfing the internet? I have, not recently, <laughs> but I've heard it. Do you ever think about where it came from? No. Here's the origin now story. Now I am. Here's the origin story. There was a uh, librarian who was tasked in, she was one of the first librarians to ever put a computer in a library, a public library. She had an Apple II, obviously it wasn't connected, it wasn't online, but she had software, had to learn basic, Word documents, all of that. Yeah. And she had put it in her library because she felt that computers were the future. And Good that, for her. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I mean, she, she would later become, I'm sure you're familiar with this, NetMom. No. That's her. This is who I'm talking about. Wow. Jean Pauly. Jean. And she was tasked on writing an article 
that would tell people about why we need to go on the internet. And <laughs> this is pre-World Wide Web. So this is, you know, it was really hard to navigate the internet before www. <laughs> and you had, <laughs> you had to work at it. And so she's writing this article and she's trying to figure out a catchy way. And she first came up with mining the internet. And then she's like, no, that's not. Sounds anything. like work. Yeah. And then it was cruising the internet. Imagine if we cool. were cruising the internet. That's embarrassing. But she thought cruising was too laid back. It was too, it, the internet was hard work. You had to be intelligent mm. to get on the internet. And she actually had a mouse pad from the Apple library that had a picture of a wave on it. Okay. Which inspired her to surf the internet. That's Beautiful. So the article is published. It's the, the, the headline is Surfing the Internet. And they made 14,000 copies of this newsletter. And they handed them out. And then they destroyed them all for some reason. Oh, come on. <laughs> and she found out that they had destroyed them all. So she posted it online. And the article went. And then the World Wide Web. And the internet took off. And then people started reading her article. And uh, she got a book deal out of it. Oh, my gosh. I she love never, that. She never made any money off the copyright or the phrasing Surfing the Internet. Not a dime. Mm, okay. But she did start writing a series of books of how for net safety for children, and she became Net Mom, which netmom.com still active today. And Is she it? Still monitors the contacts through Net Mom. So if you want to send a vine to her and say hello, oh, fine. you can. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty cool. That's super cool. And she also was the first librarian ever to be put into the Internet Hall of Fame. Oh. I did not know there was an Internet Hall of Fame. We got to look up. We should do that as a segment this week. Some more stuff in the Internet Hall of Fame. Do you think the Double Rainbow guy is in the Internet Hall oh, of Fame? Oh, I hope so. He's he got to be. be. Or oh. the Dancing Baby from Ally McBeal. I mean, that was the first ever viral video on Absolutely. the Internet. Yep. There's got to be some interesting stuff. But the first librarian, Gene Polly, who came up with the phrase, surfing the Internet. That is my contribution to Women's History Month. I love that. I'm done. And what is it, the fifth? I'm done. <laughs> no more talking about women. Tomorrow it's just going to be me here. Yeah, on I'm the out. Podcast. I've said so many things to cancel me today. Oh, gosh. We, I, we don't believe in canceling here. We have some comments we from do. our readers. Yeah. Um, Patricia. Hey, y'all from South Carolina. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Star City Creations. Star City's always around, huh? I so remember that commercial. What commercial were we talking about? What commercial were we talking about? I make so many weird references. Yeah. Uh, oh, Kelly got logged out too of Facebook. Yeah. Kelly, hope you're back in. It was How weird. How many people do you think tried to panic change their passwords? That's the, the you know, everyone ran to Twitter to find out what was going on with mm. Facebook. And they're like, don't even try to change your password because you can't. Yeah. I went to that down. Down that? Detector. Yes. Love that site. Downdetector.com. You can go there. If you're thinking, is it just me or is this website down? Go right. to Down Detector and other people are updating no, I'm also having problems here, and you can see. And there, it's like a chart, and so there's a little spike. The largest percentage of people was login. Mm. So I'm sure so many people tried to change their password. Yeah, yeah, I bet they did. Jennifer, that explains why I couldn't log in, yes. Uh, Lou Mello says, Taylor for president for life. <laughs> Part of the conspiracy, Lou. Uh, speaking of the conspiracy, conspiracy, Paladin Dark Horse says, that man in the video is nuts. There was an outage affecting Facebook service on an international level. Had nothing to do with Taylor Swift, programming error, or server, ma server malfunction. Could be what caused the outage. Probably, but isn't it more fun if, you know, the Taylor Swift thing is true? I don't know about that. Ronald Graves, <laughs> about Dave, our online dater, says, mm -hmm. Dave is an amazing idiot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's amazingly idiotic. And he's leading our national security. Oh, that's rough. Uh, Charles, can we ever get a doctor science segment on the show? I would love that. Oh, doctor I science is retired, but maybe we can get him to come out of retirement. <laughs> I've heard he's building chairs. Yeah. As a, like a hobby, he's really focused on chairs. Big chairs, mm -hmm. big chair phase. Do you know who Dr. Science is? Uh, no, I don't. You don't? No. Oh, okay. I was going to try to <laughs> try to move off past like you that. Were? It's like when you get hurt and you're embarrassed, when you don't know something and you're embarrassed. It's very young. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. He, it, the chair thing. <laughs> yeah, it all makes sense now. Yeah, it all makes sense now. I, he's busy hamming it up. He's in Japan. Yeah, that's right. Dr. Uh, Science is in Japan. Yeah. George Nelson, what are your thoughts on a quantum computer, Andrew? Yeah. Uh, I like a triple <laughs> computer more than a quantum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... 
Sorry, George. I don't I don't think we're going to help you on we'll this We'll save one. that one for Kim. Yeah. Bev loves the show. Thanks, Bev. Uh, 7H3D34 something. Hello, Allie and Andrew. Hi. George. 7H3D456. And George Nelson, you are both super fantastic, smart, and professional. Thank Hugs. you so much. Okay, and then one more. Terry, love the show and the amazing newsletter. These are just compliments. These aren't even questions. We need to put those on Kim's desk to make sure she sees those, those yeah, ones Yeah, I'm saving us. these all yeah. week, and I'm going to put them on And the any of them that say bad things about us, just put them in the shredder. Yeah, don't print those. What did we end at time, Wayne? Hey, nailed it. Between 35 and 45 is my goal. We did it. 